Thank you very much, uh, Helmut. Uh, this morning, I have a little bit the impression to be in a family event. Uh, there are so many faces which uh, are familiar to me uh, in this audience. And I, I think it's not really a surprise because, in fact, uh, with uh, many of you, we've been working hard for more than a decade to reshape uh, the uh, security settlement infrastructure in Europe and to transform a fragmented market into a harmonized European market. We are now getting closer to realizing this vision. As chairman of the T2S board and the T2S advisory group, my focus today will be on the emergence of what I like to call the European model for security settlement. I will try uh, today to describe this model and to address what I what are its components of this model, and what I think still needs to be uh, done to achieve it. To start, I would like to ask the question, why is security settlement so important for us at the ECB and the Euro system? I think we're convinced that uh, increased financial integration is important for Europe to overcome the current crisis in the long run. And I think it was more or less the message of the President uh, uh, this morning. This means that our efforts to shape the future of Europe should not fade away, even uh, in the present uh, difficulties. Long-term projects that contribute to financial integration must remain high on the European agenda. Post-trade harmonization is import an important component of the financial integration process, and indeed, post-trade projects tend to be long-term ones because they usually entail the removal of barriers that are firmly ingrained in the history and the habits of the national marketplaces. What is making uh, the change possible in the field of security settlement today is the fact that the European Commission, the market, and the euro system has converged towards the same vision and have joined forces to make it a reality. The vision is based on the observation that great inefficiencies, great inefficiencies still characterizes the security settlement infrastructure, particularly in cross-CSD transactions. In Europe, the current model for security settlement is subject to drawbacks of both monopoly and fragmentation. In practice, CSDs face no real competition in their own domestic market, and severe barriers block the way for them and their users to try to access other European markets. This is not a suitable model for achieving a true European single market. According to our shared vision, what we want to do, what we want is a model which, in which both monopoly and fragmentation are things of the past, a model in which several CSDs compete with each other, in principle, any issuer should be free to choose any CSD in Europe to register its securities. Similarly, any investor should be free to use any CSD in Europe to settle the securities they have bought or sold. This is the description of what I call the European vision. After many attempts and efforts, the implementation of the European vision for security settlement is progressing at a sustained pace. I picture the new European model for security settlement as the result of three, three streams that are flowing in parallel and will ultimately merge into a single river. Changing the surrounding landscape, these three, three streams are T2S, post-trade harmonization, and the CSD regulation. The three initiatives complement each other and will generate integration and efficiency within security settlement as far as operations, business, and legislation are concerned. There is currently a great impetus to dismantle barriers to safe and efficient security settlement in Europe. The T2S project is very much on track and the go-live date of the platform is little more than two years away. Moreover, the harmonization of post-trade market practices driven by T2S is already achieving concrete results that I will explain in a minute. T2S and harmonization create a huge potential for market integration 
to fully realize it, they need to be complemented by a harmonized legal framework. In practice, uh, they need to be complemented by the timely adoption of the CSD regulation. Although the three, three streams, T2S, harmonization, CSD regulation, are already close to forming a single river, we cannot simply sit back and wait for them to come together. There is still a lot to do to make the confluence happen in an orderly and beneficial manner for all parties involved. I would like to spend some time thinking about each of the three streams that are reshaping the securities settlement landscape. And I would like to apologize to start by T2S. T2S represents the fundamental step, fundamental step towards integration and harmonization within the securities settlement uh, layer of the European post trading. It will provide the technical infrastructure necessary to create an integrated settlement environment offering DBP settlement in central bank money across borders at the same price for all participating CSDs. I tend to be quick here because I, I'm sure you have heard this already uh, many times. By harmonizing practices which are today fragmented and often inefficient and by enhancing competition in the security settlement industry, uh, we trust that T2S will help make Europe a better place to invest, as the President already remarked earlier this morning. Where are we with the implementation of T2S? With the T2S software almost fully developed, the project is now moving from development to testing. Testing activities will span for the next two years, first internally within the Euro system, then involving users. T2S will start operation in June 2015. CSDs will, will gradually, uh, over four migration waves, uh, join uh, the T2S within a year and a half, approximately. After signing the contractual agreement last year, the President mentioned it uh, at the beginning of the day, 22 CSDs are working hand in hand with the Euro system in order to be ready for T2S on time and to maximize the benefits generated by the future single platform. CSDs and central bank will prepare, have prepared uh, detailed adaptation plans Currently, they are starting preparation of the testing phase. The large CSD participation, representing almost 100% of securities settlement volumes in the euro area, will lead to significant economies of scale and lower settlement cost. These benefits will further increase in the future as T2S remains open to other European markets and currencies that may decide to join at a later stage. I would like to stress once again the openness of T2S to all CSDs that have not yet joined the project. It will be possible for them to join in the future by paying a reasonable entry fee. As I said, the Eurosystem is closely cooperating with CSDs and central banks. In addition, work with the market goes on keeping the T2S community together. T2S is greatly benefiting from the support of the T2S Advisory Group, a forum in which all the project stakeholders are represented. In addition, I would like to emphasize the leading role that this group, the advisory group, has taken in driving T2S harmonization for, uh, forward. Market participants have always declared that T2S would only make a real difference if it came with harmonization. And this leads me to my second stream, the new European model of the new European model for security settlement, uh, meaning post-trade harmonization, and in particular, harmonization in the field of security settlement. I would like to concentrate here on the role that T2S is playing in this regard. Designing a common settlement service like T2S automatically brings harmonization in a number of areas. More specifically, T2S will help breaking down as many as six of the 15 uh, juvenile barriers. To give you some examples, once T2S is in operations, operating hours will be the same across all participating countries. 
and harmonized messages following the ISO 20022 will be used uh, everywhere. The TTOS project is also boosting harmonization because the platform has been built for the future European settlement model, rather than uh, following current national specificities. While T2S allows national markets to continue to offer their current service level, this can only be done using standardized and harmonized functionalities. Several CSDs and markets are making great efforts to reshape their current settlement infrastructure to fully exploit T2S possibilities in terms of integration and harmonization. In, term, in turn, participation in T2S will increase the incentive for CSDs to remove specificities and to achieve wider harmonization in order to be competitive in the European arena. Besides the harmonization that will be achieved as a direct result of the introduction of the single settlement platform, T2S is triggering harmonization in many other areas. Today, everybody in a T2S community see sees harmonization as one of the key deliverables of T2S. Because it provides T2S market with a single post-trade rulebook, because it protects the T2S operational blueprints from the inclusion of national specificities that could undermine the unicity of the platform. However, achieving this key harmonization is not easy and requires action by CSD, market participant, and public, public authorities both at the EU level and also at the national level. <coughs> Under the lead of the advisory group, the T2S community has engaged in the definition and implementation of concrete standards. The advisory group became involved in harmonization at the very beginning of the project already in 2007. In addition, T2S has always cooperated with other market integration initiatives such as uh, SISAMI2, EGMI, and today the European Post-Trade uh, Group. The advisory group commitments to harmonization has increased considerably over the recent years. The creation of a dedicated uh, T2S harmonization, harmonization steering group, uh, chaired by Yvon Lucas, uh, has provided a strong boost. Since then, we have taken an approach which I have myself characterized as modest and tough. Modest because we should not embrace too many topics. We should be realistic on what we aim at. And tough because we have to be very clear on uh, designating who is meeting the standard and who is not. So that there is peer pressure to uh, uh, press for uh, uh, removing uh, barriers uh, across Europe. Since 2011, the advisory group has produced annual progress reports on the harmonization work conducted in the context of T2S. The first two reports identified the harmonization issues of relevance for T2S and the actors required to resolve these issues. The third progress report uh, focuses on monitoring the compliance of the T2S market with the standards that have been defined and endorsed by the T2S community and the other relevant authorities. The third harmonization progress report was published last week, as Helmut has mentioned, and the uh, T2S, uh, and, and, and you have it uh, on the screen and in your uh, bags. Uh, the uh, advisory group in the, has defined 26 activities which relate to uh, uh, fields where harmonization is important, especially in the context of T2S. Um, 19 of these activities are essential for the new platform to function efficiently, efficiently from the beginning in 2015, and uh, six additional activities uh, will, uh, are considered as priority two because they are very important, but it might be possible to achieve compliance with them after the start of T2S, partly because the dependency of T2S is, is, is not as big, and partly because they are also very difficult to, uh, to, 
the barriers are very difficult to dismantle. The advisory group has not only identified areas of concern, it has also drawn up a concrete plan for removing the barriers. For each activity, specific actors have been identified to define the best standards or practice at the, e at the T2S or EU level. Up to now, standards have been defined for 15 out of the 26 activities. Once a standard is defined and approved by the advisory group, the relevant EU authorities or trade associations, uh, sorry, when uh, a standard is defined by the advisory group or by the relevant EU authorities or trade associations, then the monitoring process is launched to assess the compliance of T2S markets with the defined standards. All relevant stakeholders are involved in the process, CSDs, central bank, market participants, and in particular, the uh, T2S national user group established in each market, including in some markets where T2S is not uh, envisaged for the moment. A target date for implementation for each standard is set to ensure that all markets are ready on time for T2S. It is then important to have a clear view of where all T2S markets stand and to be able to escalate any problem to the relevant actors. To this end, the advisory group compiles a dashboard assigning to each market and to each monitored activity a traffic light color. Red is the color for the market who have no clear plan or delay in the or have a delay in the implementation and where urgent action is needed to resolve open issues in time. Yellow is for markets that while having a clear plan for implementation have reported the presence of technical, regulatory or legal barriers. Green is for markets where there is a clear plan in place and no major obstacle for achieving compliance by the given deadline. Finally, if a market is already fully compliant and monitoring can be discontinued, we have invented a new color in the traffic lights, the blue, because it's a European color. And uh, even if uh, I have, of course, to admit that this may not be compliant with traffic light standards. In the report that you have uh, with you, we have monitored uh, the compliance status of the T2S market with the standards for 10 activities, eight of which are priority one. Uh, this is a transparent monitoring that has greatly helped the T2S community to stay on track with the T2S harmonization agenda. I have heard many, many uh, cases where instructions have been given to be green everywhere, green or blue everywhere, and then, of course, there was uh, some discussion on whether we should not change the rules to allow uh, the, some countries to be presented on a green uh, color. Uh, my colleagues, I, I've always been open, but my colleagues have always closed the door to this kind of uh, bargaining, so we are, we are on the safe side. And these colors have been checked in a, in a dedicated meeting of the advisory group so that there is no mistake, because it was very important for the process that we are not misqualifying uh, the situation in each country, but we are in, in a position to justify any of these colors. Overall, the findings of the third T2S harmonization report represent a significant improvement compared with previous years, when despite the widespread agreement on the general need for harmonization, it proved extremely difficult to achieve concrete commitments. Progress have been substantial, especially as regards the definition and the monitoring activities that depend on the T2S community only. Some activities have already characterized by a high degree of harmonization and no major difficulties are anticipating as regards the compliance before the target date for those activities that we have just spoken. Um, the Yet you may have noticed that a number of very important activities are still marked in red in this table. Red here 
This is the 26 activities. Red here means that it is currently not possible to, st to set the standards and to start implementation. For most of these reds, the definition of the standards cannot be completed until the CSD regulation is adopted. Now you understand why we are repeatedly coming to this CSD regulation in this conference. In some cases, the technical standards detailing the CSD regulation uh, are already are also needed to establish a single rule for all markets. I will address the uh, importance of the CSD regulation again in a few minutes. Another issue which is critical, if we are to move ahead with some of the activities and market marks in red, is, to, is the need to encourage increased cooperation between the public and the private sector, especially at national level. Today, implementation of some of the EU or T2S harmonization standard is lagging behind because of outdated regulatory or legal frameworks at national level. The role of the national authorities in assisting their market to comply with the harmonization standards is of paramount importance. And I must say, in many cases, I have witnessed a, a, a very big, a very strong understanding of the national authorities to this, to this uh, issue. Cooperation between national authorities and uh, market infrastructure and market participants is crucial. What are the next steps of the harmonization agenda? We expect that the work on T2S harmonization will intensify as the T2S testing phase and the platform's go-live date approach. In the next few months, monitoring will extend to a number of new activities and standards. Uh, the definition process will also continue, and we hope that standards for most of the 26 activities will be defined by the end of this year. The T2S community will keep its primary focus on priority one items, aiming at tangible results before uh, June 2015, when uh, T2S opens. The outcome will be presented in the fourth uh, T2S harmonization progress report, which is planned for early 2014. In short, much has been achieved in the T2S harmonization agenda, and the market is making a big effort to seize the opportunity for harmonization, but a lot still lies ahead. And I would like now to come to the third stream, the CSD regulation. As I said, the efforts of the T2S community to harmonize the T2S environment can only be completed, completely effective if they are complemented by the CSD regulation. Only with the CSD regulation in place can all harmonization activities be defined and monitored. Only with the CSD regulation in place can the full benefits of T2S be achieved. The CSD regulation is a key driver for redesigning the EU settlement infrastructure. It is essential for realizing realizing the vision of a new European model for security settlement. It is important for the three main reasons. First, it provides a level playing field for competition between CSDs. Second, it facilitates the implementation of T2S in some countries. And third, it introduces extremely important elements of harmonization in the transaction chain. What changes will the CSD regulation bring about more specifically? In many aspects, the CSD regulation enforces legally what T2S makes possible technically. First of all, it opens up the market for, for settlement services, facilitating access between CSDs and between CSDs and market infrastructure. In an increasingly cross-border environment, CSD and other market infrastructure need to have access to each other and to compete in a, level, in a context of level playing field. These rights of access are not guaranteed by EU or national legislation today. Also, also uh, the CSD regulation will foster freedom to issue securities in any CSD in the EU. Today, the freedom for an issuer to choose its CSD is often limited in many member states. Next, 
the CSD regulation will exempt CSDs for requesting authorization to outsource their IT services to public authorities, and of course this is very important for T2S. Finally, the CSD regulation will introduce harmonization in several areas that are crucial to ensure efficiency and the level playing field in T2S. Two key examples are the introduction of a single rule on the standard settlement cycle in the EU and the establishment of a single settlement discipline regime. Let's look again to the dashboard summarizing the status of the uh, T2S harmonization activities. After the implementation of the CSD regulation, the definition column will turn from dominantly red to green for six activities. Location of securities account, outsourcing of IT services, discipline, uh, settlement discipline regime, settlement cycle, place of insurance, and the market access and interoperability. I think you understand why we are repeatedly saying the CSD regulation is important and urgent. This is why we consider the adoption of the CSD regulation to be the key issue for the T2S harmonization agenda of 2013. What is causing some concern is that despite the good progress made in the EU Council and at the European Parliament so far, progress on this dossier seems to have come to a halt in the first months of 2013. But of course, I, I would maybe have said it differently after the reassurances that we, we had from uh, Mr. Polis and, and from Mrs. Pierce uh, earlier today. If the regulation is not adopted as planned this year, harmonization will not be able to proceed in several areas of great importance of T2S. Okay, I don't want to be too negative because the, the start of this conference was positive on that point and I want to keep on this positive uh, um, note. To conclude, uh, I wish to reassert uh, the crucial importance of the joint efforts of the EU and national public authorities, market infrastructure, market participants, to overcome the current fragmentation in the European market for security settlement. In this way, we will be able to make the most of this unique opportunity to create a new model for security settlement in Europe. A model that is safer, more efficient, more transparent, and more open to competition. Today we are discussing all the most important initiative that has contributing to harmonization and, and, and integration in the post-trade in Europe, T2S and the harmonization agenda play an important role, and I'm sure that this topic will emerge again in the next panel, chaired by my colleague in the T2S board, uh, Paul Bodard. Thank you very much.